would not categorize yesterday as being a particularly successful day. The Dakota fire hole worked fine, but that device that I made for distilling the water, it worked in the end. I ended up shortening up the, the metal tube a little bit so that I was able to uh, get the steam going through. I think uh, there was too much pressure with that much tube there, and a lot of the steam was escaping through the, the cloth I shoved in there. Uh, so I shortened up the tube, and I was able to get some water out, but optimistically, maybe, maybe I got two cups of water. Probably not. Uh, and, and look what I'm drinking this morning, is juice. And I spent like all day yesterday working on that thing for a, a couple of cups of water. So that, that, wasn't, that wasn't cool. And, um, and additionally, you know, I know that the Dakota Fire Hole is great at, you know, having less smoke, but... Still, you know, I was sending some smoke up in the air, and it's like a day after I spooked these people down in the valley. So, I didn't sleep great last night. I feel like I probably should have left this area and, uh, you know, just headed away from here. And I think that's what I'm going to do today. Not, not just because I'm, I'm still nervous about these people in the valley and the smoke I sent up yesterday, but also because, um, well, just getting water down here is just, it's, it's too much of a thing. It's just, it's really difficult. And, um, you know, if I keep going up, uphill, I, sh I mean, I'm sure I'll, f I'll find a stream or something like that. So today that's my deal is I want to get some distance between me and them and I want to get easier access to some fresh drinking water. Uh, my ankle this morning when I woke up uh, was pretty swollen. It still is swollen. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to keep the weight off it as best I can, but... You know, just out and working and stuff like that, it's hard to be completely off it. And especially if I'm going to be hiking today, this uh, this blocking stick, as great as it was yesterday, it's it's not really cutting it. Um, so I'm thinking what I need to do today is I, I've got to make uh, I got to make some crutches that I can really get all the weight off this leg because I can't afford for this thing not to heal pretty quickly. I need this leg back. It is not working out, not being able to use it. So, so that's the first thing I'm going to be doing this morning is I got to make crutches and then uh, get the hell out of here. The most important factor in making crutches out in the wilderness is kind of luck. Uh, it really all comes down to finding a tree that has a nice uh, spot for putting underneath your arm. Because m most branches they come out at kind of a severe angle and it'd be a real pinch underneath your arm. So when you're looking for something to uh, use as a crutch, it's really critical to find something that has kind of a wide opening at the top that can can fit underneath your arm. Oftentimes trees that are injured uh, or have a, an injury in the past and have kind of grown in a strange way will have kind of a nice soft shape at the top. And that looks like the case with this maple tree here that I found. It looks like the top got broken at some point and the way the branches kind of uh, uh, grew after that, they're a little bit more open than you know they, they would normally otherwise be. Uh, there are certainly trees that will have an even better feature than this, but for now, I think that this thing is going to, you know, it's pretty good, so I'm gonna start with this guy. Uh, once, you, once you select the tree, you, uh, you know, just wanna chop it down and make sure that you uh, make it extra long so that you make sure you don't, you know, cut it a little too short on yourself. You can always cut off more, but it, you know, you can't really add, add more onto the tree very easily. Uh, and I'm just gonna go over this using this wonderful tool, my Kukri machete. Um, which I'm so glad that I brought along with me to clear off all of these uh, these extra branches. And I want to make really certain that I, I leave this and this on here because that's what's going to support my arm. For these top branches, I want to leave maybe about this much or so, because I'm, I'm not going to tr be putting my arm right in here. I'm going to be trying to grab some padding, put some padding in there as best I can. So I want to leave a little bit of extra here. Yeah, this would be a little easier if I had a chopping block. So this is, at this point, this is what's going to go under your arm like that with some padding. So next, I just want to get the rest of this uh, 
branches off. Just a bunch of little ones that come off really easily. Okay. There we go. And that's plenty long enough. So now what I got to do is stand up and try to get a good length on this thing. To get this thing cut to proper length, what you want to do is take it and put it under your arm where it's going to fit. Remember, there's going to be a little bit of padding here too, but I think we can do this without the padding for now. Then take your leg and stretch it out along the crotch and note where the bottom of your foot ends. And you want your crotch to be just a little bit longer than your foot so that you can, uh, uh, you know, you can take the weight off the foot. So just note on the crotch where your, your foot reaches down to and do a chop at that point uh, for length. Now, keep in mind, again, it's always easier to cut these shorter. You, can, you can't really very easily add length to this kind of stick. So, err on the side of making it a little bit too long, and if it feels uncomfortably long when you're using it, you can always chop it back a little bit more later. It looks like right about here is where I want to have my, my crutch ending, so I'm going to chop right there. Probably good enough that I can just snap it at this point. All right, now I've got a decent crutch. I can pad out the top. I could even use it without the padding, but the padding will make it more comfortable. Now all I got to do is make one more, just like this, and that'll make it a lot easier to walk through the woods. not the most enjoyable walk that I've done in the past month or so. Uh, these, these crutches are really helpful, but uh, just going over this uneven terrain, my foot is catching on things, you know, oftentimes one crutch will go down into a soft spot, it'll destabilize me. Uh, and also, I, I never ended up uh, padding these out. I had some cloth that I could have, but uh, not padding them out, also, I wasn't able to reinforce them. I think that was a mistake. I'm going to make some other ones and actually actually uh, pat them out to help hold them together because they're splitting just under my weight. So, live and learn. Uh, the reason I was reluctant to do it is because I've got some cloth, but I didn't want it to get all mangled up on these because it's like, you know, clothing and stuff that I took from the, the house down there. But, um, yeah, overall, I it just sucks being on your own doing this kind of stuff. I'm kind of missing Monica now. I've, had the radio on, it's on the last frequency she was calling out on, just wondering if I would hear from her, or hear from them and I can ask about her, whatever, I'm just wondering how she's doing. It just sucks to be on your own doing this stuff, because like, you know, any little thing, and uh, there's nobody to... Tropical Curie yeah. from West Michigan, I'm trying to contact with anybody in the area. Hey, this is Praxis Prepper. I am so glad to get somebody on here. I've been trying for the same time every day, just hoping. Occasionally I get a little chatter, but we haven't been able to connect. This is fantastic. Well, it's nice to hear from you too. So, where are you located, Praxis Prepper? I'm in New England. Where were you located? Yep, we're in West Michigan. So, give me a little intel. How has things been in your area? It's total collapse here. Do you know anything concrete about what's going on? Well, we don't know a lot, I have to admit. When the AI event happened, that's what we call the alien invasion, uh, we were here at home. We were babysitting both of our grandkids. Um, and my youngest son was at home with us. And all of a sudden, looked up, saw these ships over the metro area. Very confused. And then, 
had to be an EMP. We lost electricity and gas and water just all at once. Now, the mothership seems to keep over the metro area, and occasionally we have seen um, some firing at certain areas, and there seems to be a lot of smoke coming from the metro area. We do know a little bit about what happened there because my oldest son and his wife and his daughter live in the metro area and they were able to escape what would take maybe a day to walk here took them actually almost a week because they were so careful trying to avoid any contact with other people and of course with those little drones now my grandkids call the drones the minions so that's what we call them with the little minions we have noticed that if you freeze in place the minions seem to leave you alone but we try to keep more in a wooded area. Anyway, Kevin said that in the city, it's really, really bad. Um, something has happened, so there's been some gas explosions. Don't know uh, what that was caused by. There's been a lot of fires, and that could have been from you know, people using candles and caught on drapes or whatever. Um, and there's a lot of people just roaming the streets. It's uh, pretty scary there. He's very glad to get out here in the country. You know, I'm a prepper. I should have been prepared for this. And, you know, no matter how hard you try, I don't think you're ever prepared for an event like this. Um, I had enough food storage for a year or possibly longer for three people, which is my household size. But now we're up to five adults and five children. And I'm hoping to make that food supply last at least three months. And that really changes the game. So we are really busy foraging and doing a lot of activities trying to extend our food. So this is one of two traps that we have. This is a have a heart. And I love this one the best. It's really easy to bait and set. And two nights ago, we caught a nice big fat woodchuck. And last night, that was woodchuck do for dinner. So I'm going to be baiting you again and hoping to catch brother or a sister. Now I wish we had more of these traps. Now we've been using our sun oven a lot for cooking but also for dehydrating. Uh, both my sons were foraging in the woods and found a bunch of morel mushrooms so we dried them here in the sun oven. So here are the morels all nice and dehydrated and put in a jar and hopefully we'll have them this fall when food gets a lot scarcer. And I really miss refrigeration. You know, we take things so for granted, but it's so nice to keep something cold. And of course, I miss a freezer, but just refrigeration would be nice. So this is what we've done. We, um, down the creek a bit, where the spring feeds it, we've put in a big cooler. It's not a Sub-Zero, it's a Sam's Club Sub-Zero knockoff. And we immerse that, but water can't get in and that has really helped keep things cold and so far it's working great and the chickens that's something else to think about I always have enough feed um, and cracked corn to last at least three months but here's my concern if this AI event happens all summer long and into the fall and winter what am I going to do in the winter I mean, they can't forage. So I have one of these cages from an old fruit tree that I made. So my husband and I are going to use this and make a temporary pen that we can move around for our five chickens. So they can get a lot of good earthworms and green grass and other weeds. And hopefully supplement enough of their feed that we will be able to keep our layer mash and our cracked corn for the winter in case this still is going on. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. I have never walked around outside or inside always carrying. Heck, I have to admit, half the time didn't even lock my house. But now I do, and this is my Kimber 1911, and it's really the heaviest gun I have, um, but this 45 i I'm amazingly accurate with, so I've decided to carry this with me at all times. Oh yeah, and just basic hygiene. You know, we're used to taking a shower every day with nice hot water. 
And believe me, with some of the activities we're doing, we're getting dirtier than usual. Um, here I am wearing this beautiful headdress, a bandana. Yes, I am now a babushka grandma, but the honest truth is, no electric curlers. That's right, with no electricity, there's no electric curlers. So I could sleep on rollers like when I was a kid, but very often instead, I'm just putting on this bandana and covering up my very, very frizzy hair. Behind me is one of the ways we are bathing. That's right, we inflated the kids' pool and we're letting rainwater fill it and letting the sun heat it up. Does it get really hot? No, but it's tolerable for a bath. And it sure is a lot easier than lugging up all those buckets from the basement of water and heating them outside on the fire and then putting them in the bathtub. So right now, this is working for us for our bathing area. Well, I should sign off. I'm, I'm trying to keep positive, you know, positive outlook for everyone because it's really, really hard on my grandkids. They keep asking me, you know, when will mommy and daddy meet us? And, you know, I just have to say they're at home and they're safe in their basement and that's where they need to stay. But I don't know if they're safe. I, I, I can only hope and my heart just aches. And, you know, I'm a prepper, so we love to be in control. And here I am, I know nothing about the AI. Who are they? Why do they come? What do they want? How long are they gonna stay? Will they destroy all of us? Oh, I'm telling you that not knowing can drive you crazy. So we can only do our best. And I really appreciate this talk and being able to talk to somebody else. And I hope we can kind of establish a network where we could all check in, maybe at a uh, certain time. Well, thank you, Practice Prepper, and be safe. Good luck to you, too. That's what I'm talking about. You know, they got a group. There's something to be said for that. Well, I, I don't think those people down from town are necessarily following me, but better safe than sorry. I'm gonna try to put in some more hours of hiking before the end of the day. Steve, you there? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I found him. Okay. Well, what are you gonna do? What do you think? Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.